The Whippy campus has gone through a number of iterations. Just historically, this campus used to be a chocolate factory that has become a uh, community college campus now. So using our Kunami system, students are actually able to, to look at a one-stop shop and avoid the lineups that traditionally go with getting services at the college. So using their banner ID, queue into a system, they can go grab a coffee, they can relax a bit, and they'll be notified when their number's up and they come in and get service by our staff at our, our student services and registrar's office area. The Whippy campus is a fully functioning campus, so you'll, you'll notice that students have access to all of the services at our bookstore, everything from all the books that are needed in the campus as well as apparel. Students love the swag, so wherever we get a chance to promote uh, the college and the program is at this campus, we, we do that through our bookstore. We're currently uh, standing in the cafeteria area. We've got, a, again, a fully functioning cafeteria here. There were some renovations that have happened to this area. We knocked out walls to give the area a better feel and, uh, and a better flow for students. We were also able to move our faculty offices and create a whole student space. Our student association actually helped us with talking to students to design this space, but it is a, a common area now that's used for students. It's really quite exciting when we see students talking to faculty members at the tables, so it's used for a number of different things. So it's really a well-utilized area and it's really added to the student life at this campus. Uh, one of the things we've, we've uh, been trying to address at the Whitby Camp is, is, is uh, the need to include more student life activities for our students. It's quite a dramatic change for us at this campus because we have traditionally been been much more apprenticeship focused and apprentices come in they're in usually for a day a week and they they come to classes and they go home we are trying to make sure that the students here get a much more well-rounded uh, sense of college life and what that means again as part of the renovations at this campus we increased the size of our computer commons area previous to this we probably had about 10 or 15 computers in a room but we've seen uh, such an interest in students being able to not only check their own emails and, and, and do their own work on these systems, but with the increased amount of computer-related activities in our classrooms, students are being expected to do assignments and projects now in our computer lab, so we expanded the size of this facility and now house about 75 computers in here. We also have at this campus a, a technician who can support students if they've got any kind of hang-ups getting into systems. And as I mentioned earlier about our Qunami system, we also have a, a ticketing booth here for Qunami. So if students are working on computers and their number is called, as you can see on the screen, then they know they can leave the computer and go over to the registrar's office to get their services in place. As you can see by our shop facilities, we do both traditional conventional machining and then we actually get students over to the CNC machines where it's computer operated design of equipment. As we move in here, this is the, the millwrights. So these are the guys that keep those machines running. So they don't produce a part, they keep the facility running. If you're in a factory, they're the ones that replace belts on conveyor systems. In the last couple of years, I've installed this pump loop. So this will replicate the way that fluids move through nuclear reactors. So we're able to do the lifting of the motor so students learn hoisting, construction hoisting techniques, as well as what they need to know around a pump loop and, and those kinds of activities. So it is quite exciting for us. So you get some of these bigger valves that are really important for us to tear apart. These have been donated to us through different organizations in our area. We are the only college in the province that delivers training and elevating devices. So you'll notice here, you'll see a freight elevator. You'll see as we walk through two functioning elevators as well as an escalator. So we're the only college in the province that actually offers that training through apprenticeship. We deliver welding, so you'll see it's a, quite an active shop, and students learn all different kinds of processes in welding. High demand, uh, both within our region and across the country, and the ones that are in welding are just passionate about welding. They love it. Uh, one of the things that's really quite unique about the shop is everything you see in here is part of donations from industry. So all of our vehicles are donated. We, we probably have another 10 or 15 vehicles out in the compound in the back. You'll see our, our throughout the campus we use simulators quite often too. So students are doing work on air conditioning units and cars on simulators before they actually get to the vehicle. So it gives them a chance to try things out before they get on the vehicle and, and actually start doing the work. This campus also houses a number of construction trades. Our two largest are our plumbing programs and our electrical programs. We will have upwards of uh, 400 plumbers come through this campus in a year and approximately 600 electrical apprentices. And what we will have above us is we'll have a replica of a house. So if we're doing plum work, we will do sinks and toilets and showers. And then what students do is they work below to actually determine what the piping is like at the ground level. And just recently, we've received donations have installed two systems that are now energizing electric vehicles. 
So we're showing our students how to, how to do the installation of, of these units. The phase one of the building extensions at the Whippy campus included the installation of about 370 solar panels on the roof, six wind turbines, and we installed 32 geothermal wells at the front of the building that go down about 350 feet. So you'll see the white pipe work is how we're chilling and warming the air from about 350 feet below us and how it keeps the campus heated and cooled during the different seasons of the year. So as part of phase two in the evolution of the Whippy campus, it was a continuation of our sustainability and energy management programs. And we relaunched a carpentry program that we ran about 15 years ago. But the big difference is it's a sustainable carpentry program. So we are in a local partnership with our Habitat for Humanity folks in Oshawa. And we're not only helping to construct the houses that they're building in Oshawa, but we're helping them deconstruct homes. So we're actually being able to go to homes taking out windows that are still useful, staircases, and are able to reuse those in a build. So it's not just about energy sustainability, it's about sustainability from an environmental perspective. So it's an exciting opportunity for our students. Uh, it gives them real world experience in terms of constructing homes, but also forces them to think about how they make sure they are being sustainable when they're building. So you can see an older home that was actually transported from a lot in Oshawa to the Whippy campus. And then we had a series of builders come in and build a new house. A number of sustainability features built into it. So everything from uh, tankless water systems to radiant heating. On the other side of the building, we're in the process of installing a solar tracker. So this home will actually be off the grid. And we are able then to show the students the old technology. So, you know, older windows, older insulation, older electrical, and, and, and be able to compare how, how changes happen. The new buildings, will be built to this kind of standard. But the reality is we've got so many homes in our region that are like this, that need to be renovated. So it's not enough for us to just build new homes. We've got to be able to show students how you can retrofit the older homes in our region. And finally, phase three is actually taking place. And you can see the Center for Food is really starting to take shape for us. We will be welcoming about 600 students to this campus and a, a large number of them will be involved in our culinary programs. There'll be horticulture, there'll be uh, agriculture programs, but it's going to be uh, really interesting uh, dynamic at this campus and it's going to change the feel of this campus drastically and everyone's looking forward to introducing and, and welcoming in a new kind of student and, and uh, new faculty members from other programs.